Okay, so 10.7. Um, 10.7 is the start of looking at... My camera's at a weird angle. Like, I am not directly onto my laptop. Anyway, 10.7 um, is telling where things are located. And this is the first where we're really getting into finding stuff and giving directions. Um, ASL uh, 3 and 4 are dealing with concepts like this and how well you use them in everyday conversation. Um, it's a combination of uh, horizontal organization, uh, <laughs> what? horizontal organization and vertical organization. Um, everybody does a little bit different when they're teaching that whole family tree thing, which 30 years in deaf culture, and I have never spontaneously seen anybody talk about their family tree. I don't, I know why we teach it. It just seems like a really disconnected way. Anyway, really disconnected way of doing it. There's, uh, there are better ways of teaching vertical organization. States, where cities are in the state of Ohio, things like that, where we can picture stuff like that. I mean, I don't know, lots of different things we can do. Um, in this case, we're taking a combination of where vertically on that surface something is, like there are three shelves there. Um, also sides, how far over, three, you know, here's the dishwasher, refrigerator, and there are the drawers. Okay. So we're gonna be working in, in space like that. Um, and it's a combination. So ultimately it's in 3D space and we're gonna be walking through. Again, it's that concept of VR goggles. Is it's, you know, imagine that you're wearing, you're recording a VR thing and you're taking the person and saying, look, it's right here, get that thing. So that's a lot of what this next thing is. Um, slides are not working. Okay, there we go. Um, I'll put the, again, I'll put the, the video of this entire thing in there. Let me know if if any of the videos are not working. I'm trying to eliminate the, the GIF files. Uh, I've probably said this before because they really gum up the works, uh, at least when I'm recording this. If I, I'll put in other ones if I think it'll help later or after the fact. Um, so where is that thing? That's the goal of this whole conversation. Um, so once again, have that conversation with yourself, or if you have another classmate or another ASL student who you can have a conversation with, go back and forth with this. And one person just asks where something is, and the other person describes. Um, it could be, where is your mom now? Oh, well, mom is in the kitchen cooking, I don't know, whatever you, um, whatever you want to do just to sort of put someone on the spot and have to decide, have to describe, have to give directions. That's the, that's the activity you want to aim for. Um, and if you're doing it yourself, ask, answer. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to look at how we break this down. We do this all the time. Um, but I want, we need to point it out in ASL because, um, as, a, as students, we tend to jump right to what we, the, 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 the vocab we know. Go right to that, and it can be confusing. So you still have to keep in mind, you're always gonna start from the largest uh, division down to the most specific and most precise. You, uh, I believe the same way if you do art. Imagine that you've gotta paint a portrait. You don't start with the ring on their finger, right? And then an earring maybe one eye, their eyebrow, so pretty, and then try to make that all match. It's really hard. You start with the general. Where's the location? How big is the person? Here's, you know, you're sketching out. You watch someone pencil out a painting they're gonna do. Figure out, okay, the dress is gonna be here. The, the tree is over here in the background. This is over here. So they have the general layout. And then you work your way through the generals, through the, the medium-sized things. And then you get down to find the last thing that are the little details. 
shading on this, a little lightening on this, those kind of things. So a little reflection of something on this. Um, so that's the same way we're going to describe ASL. Um, in ASL, it's where something is or where someone is. Imagine uh, along the same lines, if you were sending someone to the airport to pick up a family member who's coming in, you wouldn't say, um, yeah, go pick up my cousin Bob and leave it at that. Because one, how many Bobs are in your, if that person just walked around, Bob, Bob, how many people named Bob are there? Um, you would be, okay, so you're going to have to go to this airline's uh, arrivals gate. And then um, wherever that ends up being, if they move it or whatever, uh, here's the flight number. So that takes you to the carousel, the right, you know, carousel for luggage and then look for this person what is it that sets them apart uh could be gender male female uh could be um height or physical size now again in asl and deaf culture we tend to be a bit more seemingly blunt to hearing people but what it really is is that we're saying here's what it looks like um, it's not considered an insult to point out that someone is large if that person is large because that's the visual cue you see. Um, it's an acknowledgement of that. It's not a judgment. Judgment is a whole other layer that can be put on it that we avoid. Um, uh, people constantly, when they talk about me as an interpreter, oh, tall guy, yeah, tall white guy, glasses, that, yeah. And before it was, I had shoulder length hair. so the Right. So general to specific, my personality type. Um, so now taking all of that concept, it's sort of a funnel. So you start with the broadest concept down here. You can see it on the micro level where if we say um, there's a reason why we prefer to say car red as opposed to red car. Because if you think about which gets you to the specific quicker, all of the things in the world that are car shaped and also red is pretty efficient. All the things that are red in the world that happen to be shaped like cars, that's a huge leap. Red, my first thought, Apple, something like that, what's in the Coke can. I'm not thinking cars. So then you switch to car, I'm like, oh, okay, red car. But it makes a lot more logical sense. It, there's a lot less processing. If you say car, immediately the brain goes all the different, all the different shapes of cars there are, which aren't that many. They're pretty, you know, even the Batmobile is still pretty much a car. Um, so all the cars, and then you paint it red. So that gets you much easier, much more easily to the concept of a red car than all the red things in the world that are car shaped. Okay. Um, it's a subtle thing at times, but general to specific. So here we got the general location. Where are you looking for something in this room? Uh, you may have to give directions to get to that room, but for right now, we just assume that someone knows the house. So what room? And it's a new topic, right? You're saying, oh, we're talking about in the library, in the bathroom. Same room, no, in the game room, whatever it is, eyebrows. Okay, so you know where that is? Yes, great, okay, I can move on. If you go in the kitchen and they go, where's that? And you're like, um, first floor. So then you have to give more details. So again, eyebrows up, because you're giving you information. Then which direction? And I mean like where, if you walk in, where is it gonna be? Is it to your right, is it to your left, up, down? So in which direction do I start to focus? And then last, is it in a cabinet? Is it on a shelf? Um, is it under something? Is there like a cover over it? So specifics, so room, which location, which, gen, you know, which direction to specific place. So think about that process. And if, it, if you find yourself jumping around or if you get confusing to someone else, if you're ever practicing and 
Something is confusing. It's not about, oh, you screwed up. It's your fault. You suck. It's not that. Try to look at where was, where was their miscommunication? And most of the time, it's something just simple of, oh, it was really clear in my mind, but I didn't include that information on my hands. It's usually something really simple and fixable. But those are the kinds of things you want to be aware of. Start to pay attention to, oh, what did I sign that wasn't clear? In ASL 1, everybody says, C is forward, O is forward, right? But as an interpreter, sometimes this is in clear. Sometimes C is not clear. If I'm trying to give information, it, it can be unclear. That is so much clearer. And if you find that 45, it's a good compromise. Um, same thing with numbers, one, two, three, four, five. But sometimes you really want to go 1.5. I'm counting at one, two, three, right? So being aware, hyper aware of what your audience is getting. That's why we're always, we've always been encouraging that active listening. We want you to watch that person and make sure they're right with you because you can't always tell when they, when they get off track. Um, and it's ultimately, it's your responsibility to tell the story, to be clear. If you put out something that's not clear and don't, don't catch when you lost these people, you know, your followers, and that's being a bad shepherd. Uh, so anyway, keep them with you, keep them following, make sure they know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. So I was describing myself, you know, older guy, gray hair, a little bit narrower, and then glasses and signing. Easy way to pick me out of a crowd. Right? There's lots of new vocab. I think there's 21. Um, I'm not going to include all the GIFs. Again, it gums up the works of the recording. But um, TV remote. Right? Some of these are going to require fingerspelling. Some of them are just plain. Some of them actually have an explanation more than just a sign. It's like we have to say TV remote because this could be anything. Your garage door opener, your the key, to uh, the push button thing to unlock your car. So TV, remote push button, um, aspirin. This is the generic sign for medicine. But if we do headache medicine, that's clear, right? Could be mm, sore throat medicine, hop, hop medicine. Knife, scissors. Scissors and cut are basically the same thing. Scissors, cut. Cut tends to be a repetitive when you show the actual cut you're making versus scissors is usually just two cuts going across. I just was having this conversation with another student. Um, nail clippers, blah, 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 nail clippers, right. Uh, dictionary. Sometimes you will see dictionary, encyclopedia. I think I've seen thesaurus. It's basically here's the book and you're looking up something. Um, uh, this will be often the sign for research. You'll see it with an R. I'll recommend every time try to get away from the initialized sign, unless you're being really specific. If you're talking about the difference between dictionary and thesaurus or dictionary and encyclopedia, then it makes sense to add those because there's not separate signs for those two things. So dictionary. So we look up outward and we sign dictionary inward. So dictionary, research, stapler. Um, you'll notice with some of these too that they're what we call instrument classifiers. And that is when you show the action but not the object that you're using. Shovel is a perfect example, shovel, right? You don't actually see the shovel, but you fill it in based on what I'm doing. So it's called, it's called an instrument classifier. Um, stapler is the same way, as opposed to paperclip, where this is the paperclip. Stapler, or uh, camera. Another thing too, where it's an instrument classifier, we don't actually see the camera. Uh, it used to be like this. Now people are just 
tells me. Um, boom, boom, boom. When I was a kid, they said, it's not like you're going to be carrying a camera with you all the time. Not like you're going to be carrying a calculator with you all the time. Memorize those. So much easier now. Candle. Tape. Um, do, 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 do. Towel. Magazine. And again, go through the vocab with these at your own pace. Um, if you see a vocab word in any of these where you know you learned a different sign for it, um, let me know, especially if you know where you could find um, the vocab that you learned, and we can put them together. Because um, we generally teach Ohio Standard, uh, which is an East Coast preference um, of ASL, mostly influenced by like Gallaudet and RIT. The textbook comes from the West Coast, so it's a very San Francisco based. Um, so there are some signs that are very different. Um, so if you see anything, let me know, and we can try to. I can try to add to this um, PowerPoint and lecture of what some variations are. Best way to practice this vocab is either have the conversation with yourself of where is this, um, where is this, or um, in this case, the idea of. Remember, how do you get around if you don't know the sign for something, or you describe what it looks like, or describe how to use it, or give the opposite and ask what's the opposite. So you could do the same thing where, oh, where is that thing that, uh, what is that thing that uh, uh, it like can hear? So the idea that you're talking about, uh, what's that book where you uh, look up words that you don't know? Uh, oh, dictionary. Okay. Oh, I see. So that's a good way. Um, what's hard, and I know, especially with this whole online flipped classroom thing, is getting yourself to ask yourself stupid questions that you already know the answer to. I completely know. Um, it's learning that format of being able, oh, how do I do this? Oh, this is how you do it, even though you already know the answer. What you're trying to do is you're trying to internalize the grammatical structures and the rhythm of how to ask those questions, how to answer those questions. And my video just sort of, what is going on? Why is it looking all blurry? Okay. Um, anyway. So for the next section in, on the slideshow, you're going to see a picture of a room. First, going to figure out all the vocab that we know what they are. And there's the whole list of vocab. And there's each number. Just follow those. I believe the number's all correct. Would you love to have that kitchen? So once you know what the vocab is, now, how would you describe where in the room it is? Remember in uh, the last, in last class, ASL 2, when we were talking about the restaurant, where there are three walls and what's on the walls? Same thing goes in here, kitchen. What's on each wall? What's in your wallet? So how to point out, okay, it's here, it's gonna be over here and down here, right? Where there's the counter and the sink is right there. So now, can you do the same thing in your kitchen? So you walk in the kitchen from the doorway, what do you see, where is it? What shape is the room? And then once you establish that shape, keep it consistent. So, so that you know, the sink is here and that the far wall isn't in a weird place. Make sure you're keeping that same. Once you set a room size, that's where things are. They're all within that established space. Um, the next few slides, each one will have a uh, red red X. First of all, look for that, and then how would you describe where how to find that thing, whatever's in there. Um, when we talk about specific identifier, I've you've probably seen in the slides using a reference point. Um, it's like when we use this in ASL one, we talk about drawing a circle. And that you oftentimes will use your non-dominant hand as a reference point to show it's three squares below it. Or here's the shelf, and then there's one, two, three shelves. 
right there. This helps us give a distance of how many steps down. We've done it with directions where turn left and then it boom, boom, boom. Three streets, right? This street and then one, two, three, one, two, three. So we use that reference, you put a pin in it. Um, like in GPS where you're, you know, Google, you're asking Google for directions. Here's your starting place. This is where you're gonna go to. So where are the matches? Name of furniture, appliance. This is all activities we would do in class where I would, I would describe, and then you'd be looking on the paper where it is. So again, name the room, kitchen. Um, it's in the drawer over here, and then it's one, two, three. I'm glossing over these pretty quickly because the videos we're going to watch as the exercises give really clear examples and they're filmed so much better than I can film with this buggy laptop. Where the magazine is, you may have to look for where the X's are. That's in the far side in the open cabinet. Um, the red X is upper left hand corner of the picture. So another two dials. And in the first one, she's talking about uh, where to get candles and in the, yes. And then the second one is she wants scissors to be put back. And there's some questions that come right from the worksheet that I posted. And again, the worksheets are not required. They're just supplemental. Um, is Terry Lean uh, bought something for a party? So reading comprehension, these are the type of questions that I'm going to ask when I give a video um, for you to pick out details that are in the story that may not be the most obvious answer. Um, second one is she wants scissors put away, but here's some other stuff that comes out in the conversation. So take a look. And the next section is asking for a favor. And someone in the video is going to eyelash, so is going to ask a favor and say it somewhere in uh, in the room in the kitchen. So hopefully these videos are are large enough. I'm trying to I try to keep the reference point, uh, the reference picture in there without making it too small. Uh, I may rearrange this slide if there's a better way I can do it, but I'll cut half of that. Anyway, um, I put down at the bottom, if you just like look at those three items, what's the item that's being looked for? What's the reason for the request? And where? Which letter is it? So each of those goes through. Now rearrange these. Six of them. And then again, we have the vocab, and I've put up a separate um, slideshow in Blackboard of all of the vocab. And then here are all the videos for seven, in case you're missing any or any froze up. Um, you can find those. So that's 10.7. Again, a lot of these are um, one specific point that we're expanding on, and it's not a whole huge amount of information. It's just stuff that you need to practice on your own. Right. So that's 10.7. 10.8 is on its way.